Looking at YouTube these days, there are so many videos screaming why you should not use a VPN. To begin with, I'm very familiar with VPN scams. There are free providers like Ola VPN, Super VPN, or BetterNet that openly record and sell user data. Don't provide an acceptable level of security and even get breached. It's like, what's the point? We've all seen the attention grabbing ads. Grainy night vision footage of hackers illustrated with words like exposed and dangerous. Various scare tactics exist about anyone being able to access your personal information if you don't protect yourself with a VPN. It's no surprise then that the global VPN market is projected to be worth a staggering $45 billion by 2026. That's an enormous amount of money riding on persuading regular internet users that a VPN is essential. But is it really? Look, I get it. Privacy and security online are important. But do VPN services actually deliver meaningful value for average users? Or is this just a sales tactic? On the surface, a virtual private network sounds useful. It creates an encrypted tunnel that your internet traffic passes through, hiding your real IP address and location. But do most people really need to mask their location or IP when doing everyday tasks like email, browsing the news, or streaming Netflix? Don't answer that. Well, yes, they do, actually. So what's really my point? Most experts agree that unless you have a specific threat model like living under an authoritarian regime, a VPN provides limited additional security for the average person browsing the web. I don't live in a restrictive regime, but hey, you might. Should you use VPN to get around those restrictions? If that's what you need, then yeah, get on it. Modern encryption standards have come a long way to automatically protect us. So that begs the question. Are VPN companies actually solving real online privacy and security problems? Or are they manipulating people's fears to turn a profit at the cost of user experience and even our privacy in some cases? One of the biggest privacy claims made by VPN companies is that they keep your internet activity hidden and secure. But the truth is, for most everyday online tasks, your traffic is already well protected without a VPN. Modern internet security standards have come a long way. HTTPS encryption is now the norm across most major websites. When you visit a page with the green HTTPS in the URL bar, that means the connection is securely encrypted end-to-end -end between your device and the server. This protects your data in transit so that hackers can't snoop on what you're doing or send passwords and login credentials in clear text. According to reports, over 90% of the top websites now use HTTPS by default. So for normal browsing, online banking, shopping, and so on, your traffic is already securely tunneled without needing a VPN to encrypt it further. You'd really only need a VPN if directly connecting to sites without HTTPS protection, which is highly rare these days. But even more importantly, when you use a commercial VPN service, you're not getting end-to-end -end encryption. Instead, you're handing over all your internet activity, including your browsing history and traffic destinations, to the VPN company. They have full visibility into everything you do online from their network vantage point. You're literally handing over your all of your internet traffic, and again, there's some caveats to that, to these VPN companies. You are saying, I don't really know who's watching me, but somebody's watching me, so instead, I'm gonna let you watch me. And here's the real issue. A VPN company could be compelled by legal warrants or state-sponsored hacking to inadvertently reveal your data. You have to take them at their word that they fully protect your privacy, which is a risky proposition for something that sees your entire online identity. So in reality, VPNs weaken your encryption model and privacy rather than strengthening it for most use cases. Your regular internet connection with HTTPS is likely already well protected without the trade-offs of a VPN third party. When you take a step back, some VPN business models raise legitimate questions about their commercial motivations and how they manage to be profitable while still protecting user privacy. Many popular VPN services charge prices that seem absurdly cheap given the infrastructure required, just $2 to $5 per month. Yet some boast of terabits worth of data traffic on their networks per day. Experts estimate that handling that amount of bandwidth should cost millions per month at market rates. The only way a company could afford such a massive operation while charging bargain prices is by monetizing user data in some way. There is no way 
for these companies to exist to run VPN infrastructure that is pulling in gigabits or terabits a second and then pumping it across the internet, they have to be selling your data. Literally have to be. Things like anonymized usage analytics, advertising revenue based on interests inferred from traffic patterns, or selling aggregated user habits and browsing profiles to third parties. Even if VPN providers claim not to outrightly sell data, the incentive remains for them to derive income from our online behaviors flowing through their networks since it does not align otherwise. Meanwhile, large commercial VPN companies have a far greater systemic risk profile than smaller nonprofits or independent operators. When you centralize huge volumes of internet traffic, it makes you an attractive target for surveillance through legal interception. Given these motivations and risks, trusting a for-profit VPN company with your complete online identity requires a leap of faith. I would say their business models certainly deserve an extra level of scrutiny. All right, guys, let's talk about the few legitimate uses for a VPN. Now, I'm not saying they're useless. There are some specific scenarios where they can provide real value. First up, if you live somewhere with heavy internet censorship like China, Iran, or Russia, a VPN can be your best way to access blocked content on the open web. By routing your traffic through servers abroad, it hides what you're doing locally from the censorship systems. With a VPN, your internet connection is encrypted and routed through a server in a different location, making it possible to access censorship and access restricted content. In those restrictive environments, a VPN lets you see what the rest of the world sees online. Second, when you're on public Wi-Fi networks, say at the airport, coffee shop, or hotel, a VPN protects your data as it travels over those open hotspots. Without the encryption, Snoopy hackers on the same network could potentially grab your passwords or eavesdrop on your browsing. For short hotspot sessions, modern HTTPS is probably enough, but long term, a VPN adds an extra layer of security. Finally, torrent clients let us openly share all kinds of content, but in some countries, certain file sharing is still illegal, according to internet service providers. Using a VPN shields your torrent traffic and downloads from your ISP's prying eyes to avoid nasty fines or penalties. These are really the few legitimate reasons one may want a VPN. But for regular internet browsing, streaming, and social media use, they just aren't necessary for most of us thanks to encryption built into modern web standards. A VPN should only be a last resort privacy tool in my view. While a VPN promises added security and privacy, what it often delivers for most average users is a noticeable blow to internet speeds. And in today's high-speed, streaming-centric online world, that's a major downside. When you connect to the internet, your traffic takes the most direct route available. But a VPN reroutes all your data through its own remote servers before reaching the ultimate destination. This extra hop and the encryption, it adds impact performance in a few key ways. Firstly, the latency or response time is increased between you and the websites or services you're accessing. VPN routes your internet traffic through a survey before reaching its destination, which can cause some latency and slow down the connection. VPN servers introduce lag, which is barely noticeable for simple tasks, but really hinders real-time audio and video communication apps or high-speed gaming. Bandwidth is also reduced as the VPN has to squeeze your connection's maximum speeds through its private tunnel. This degradation might be acceptable for browsing, but it makes HD video streaming frustrating with frequent buffering. Commercial VPN infrastructure cannot match raw speeds from dedicated business-grade fiber lines your ISP uses. No matter how fast a VPN claims to be, it introduces suboptimal routing compared to your local network configuration. For normal internet citizens who just email, shop online, and watch YouTube, these performance penalties outweigh the minimal security gains from a VPN especially when modern encryption solutions like HTTPS already protect web activity adequately without slowing you down. Speed should be a primary concern online, so unless you have an elevated threat model, sacrificing responsiveness is an unnecessary compromise for most average day-to-day -day internet use cases. Well, that's it for today's video. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, hit the subscribe button, and turn on the post notification so you won't miss more videos like this. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching.